Hi, this is Mark McHugh, and today I will go over Alfred Sturban's many accomplishments, experiments, and just a quick biography of his life. Alright, let's get on to the first slide. Sturban was born in 1891 and was heavily exposed to the world of academia. Both his grandfather and father worked at the College of Illinois, where his grandfather was the founder and president of the college. His father no longer wanted to be a professor and decided to move to a mobile Alabama. Alfred Stimber needed to travel a long way by train to get to his single room uh, school. After high school, Stimber attended Columbia University. Here he meets a professor named Thomas Morgan in a biology class. At the time, Morgan was studying the transfer of inheritable phenotypes. Sturvin impressed Morgan with a paper about horse coat color. Sturvin observed coat color of horses while on his farm in Alabama and noticed patterns of inheritance of these coats. This was his first published paper. This paper opens a new door for Sturvin. Morgan invited him to his fly room. The fly room was dedicated to genetic studies on Drosophila. Famous studies that worked in the fly room include Morgan, Sturvin, Bridges, and Miller. In his fly room, Morgan was working on crossing over and describing sex-limited inheritance. When Morgan found a white-eyed fly, he realized this only occurs in male flies due to the trait being found on the Y chromosome. Sturgeon is mostly famous for making the first genetic map. For Morgan, he knew crossing over changes the expected proportions of offspring, and this only happens on homologous chromosomes. His idea was distance was the same as crossing over frequency. During this time, his breeding techniques were not that complicated. He placed the flies with the desired mutations in a jar with food and let them breed. What caused problems with his breeding was his smoking habit that got smoke into his populations. There were six factors being crossed, which were B, C, O, P, R, and M. These factors were crossed and the F2 generation was counted. The F2 was seen to have the original combination of flies in a higher frequency than the other combinations. Distance was taken as a proportion of the chromosome, so one cross happens every 100 gametes. The percentage is the distance. The, factors, the order of factors was found to be B, C, O, P, R, and M, with C and O being completely linked. This is his first set of data showing the proportion of crossovers to the entire population. Stephen counted the amount of crossovers in the two factors and simply divided this by the population. This percentage is the distance between the factors. Stewart found the smallest amount of crossovers between B and O. This does not include C and O because they did not cross over. The, B, the largest B is between O and M, which has a 54% crossover. These factors should be closest to the edge. Percentages that are close together, like his findings of P and R, show that these factors do not cross over often. With Stewart's idea, this means that the genes are close together. You will typically see crossovers unless the genes are always inherited, like C and O. This is a good way of Sirin's findings of distance and order. The reason the O factor is known appears due to O and C being completely linked. As stated, the order will be B, C, P, R, and then M. Sirin's method for genetic mapping became the standard technique. In the picture, it shows the, the Human Genome Project, which uses his techniques. Sturgeon also realizes that crossing over is a leading factor in evolution. After receiving his PhD in 1914, he received money from the Carnegie Institute of Washington to continue working on the fly room. He continued to genetically map Drosophila with Morgan and other fly room scientists. Stuart married one of his fly room assistants, Phoebe Curtis Reed. He had three children with her, and the eldest being William. William became a success, successful anthropologist and ethnologist. Until he died in 1970, Stuart was a professor at California Institute of Technology. He was teaching modern genetics. The only year he left Caltech was to go to Germany as an endowment of international peace.
While he was at Caltech, he meets another professor, George Beadle, and they wrote the modern genetics textbook. Him and Beadle started genetic research at the College of at the College and Stewart continues to study Drosophila. His last discovery was finding two mutations that when they are expressed cause death to the fly. When these mutations are found on their own, the fly is unharmed. This leads to genetic research in how genes interact with one another. Thank you, and if this was probably in person, we would be asking questions and whatnot, but this is the end, and this is all the works that I used to do the project.